In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to grow faster on YouTube. Whether you're just getting started or right now you feel stuck, we're gonna be doing live Q&A or if you're here on the replay, I think you'll get a lot of value out of this because we're also gonna be going through the seven C's of YouTube success based on the book, YouTube Secrets. And so, hey, uh, good to see you if you're here live. Uh, what's up, Jay Fuzzy, what is going on? Uh, super pumped to see you, and let's dive into it straight away. We're gonna get to some questions as well, but hey, we're just meeting, my name's Sean, and my mission is to help you build your influence with online video and social media. We do that here on our channel, Think Media. I'm based in Las Vegas. Um, I've got a, a small team, and we're just wanting to impact people and share the life-changing message of the fact that social media, online video, and the internet is changing the world. Um, I've been a full-time entrepreneur for a little over four years now. And hey, I'm gonna be giving away a couple copies of YouTube Secrets. And so to enter to win, just uh, leave a question, but answer this comment. What is your YouTube channel about and what is one of your goals? I'll give away two copies of YouTube Secrets. I'll be uh, looking through those. And so if you share kind of your vision, your goals about your channel, I just wanna pick two out of the best comments and then uh, we'll reach out to you in the comments and uh, send two people details in the description to a copy of YouTube Secrets. Um, I also started this off with a few questions on Twitter. So if we're not connected on Twitter, at Sean Cannell, um, and I'm gonna start with those questions because I gave them a little heads up on Twitter. So we'll do that. And then we'll get to your questions. So the best way for me to see your questions is to put a bunch of question marks, like four question marks before and after, so it really stands out. Um, Heather on the Think Media team is mentioning some things and she'll be helping out in the chat as well. So let's dive into it. Hey, the seven C's of YouTube success Success is the topic. You know, to start on YouTube, you gotta have courage, then you gotta get clarity, you gotta set your channel up, you gotta create some fire content, build community, make some cash so this thing is sustainable, and then ultimately find out how you can be consistent over the long haul. So if you have a question about any of those, please type it out. And the first question on Twitter from Miss MJYC says, what's a strategy for coming up with content on a regular basis? Love the question. Um, first thing I would say is, always be looking for content ideas and always be writing them down. Create like your little note in your phone or if you use Evernote because there's sometimes when creativity and inspiration will hit you but there's sometimes when you need to shoot a video and you're like, I don't know what to shoot about. So always be capturing ideas. Another thought is be paying attention to the topics and trends in your industry. Whatever your topic and niche is, you should 100% be following and paying attention to relevant topics in the industry. You know, right now um, over on Think Media, we got to cover an event called NAB, and that's a local tech event here in Vegas. So we were able to get our hands on the road video might go. Now, right now, uh, if we get 10,000 views or even four or 5,000 views, that's kind of a low or the basis for Think Media. But this one already has 23,000 views. Why? It's a hot topic. Everyone's talking about this little road mic. So what are the hot topics in your niche? Try to cover and talk about those. And guess what? You might say, well, I can't travel to events. Did you know that you could put a little deck together like I am right now, put a picture of it, do all the research, do all the studying, do all the stats and still talk about it? People do that all the time. So you can find a creative way to talk about the trending topics in your industry and niche. The next thing I'd say is use the strategy of using the YouTube search bar for coming up with ideas. So right now, if I'm doing video production, I might just type in video production and I'm gonna see 27,000 people a month are searching for that. And so then I might go a little further and say, okay, video production tutorial, people wanna see that, can I help people? But maybe I'm gonna share a video production tutorial with beginners. What we're seeing here are the actual search terms people are searching for on YouTube. And what we're learning is specific video ideas that we could create. So take a general idea that you have in whatever your niche is, and then go a little bit more specific with it um, by doing your research using the search bar. What is predicted there is what people are really searching in order. And if you wanna be able to see those keyword search volumes, just download the free tool called Keywords Everywhere and uh, that should help you out. One other strategy is that, this is a good one, if you um, wanna know like a video idea of somebody else in your niche, like, um, like someone, look for someone who's, who's like crushing it in your niche, so I'm looking up the keto diet right now, I don't really want Dr. Oz, um, I'm actually gonna go to this one guy that I'm subscribed to who's just ripped and I just 
I just look at his thumbnails. I don't even click on the videos because I'm too discouraged by it. But uh, someday, here it is, Thomas Delore. Dude, this guy is just freaking jacked up. Okay, so this guy um, is, is killing it, 1.3 million subscribers. But even the videos on his channel, and I'm using vidIQ right here uh, to be able to see these trending videos on his channel. If you haven't grabbed vidIQ, get that, man. I, maybe Heather could post it. Uh, vidiq.com forward slash think free version is a great way to start but with this trending tab i can look and see okay what videos from thomas that are a little bit older like this one that like really old like uh two years old ketosis mistakes and then i say okay well have i covered ketosis mistakes because this video is two years old but it's still getting 113 views per hour so it's like a hot evergreen topic in this industry um you know if it's 10 days ago and it still got view velocity, well, dude's got a lot of subscribers, so of course it does. But if it's older, like a year old, most people do hit cardio wrong. So notice too, two of his most popular videos, there's a video idea, is the negative. What are the mistakes of your industry? Or how are you speaking to things where people are doing it wrong? Like everyone's saying this, but you're gonna say that. So those were just some inspirational video ideas that were firing off as I researched someone else. I'm not in that space, but if I was, I could go look at what's trending and then add to my take on some of those topics. And I think that'll serve you and help you really um, uh, get some great video ideas. Thanks for the question. Uh, next question, Troy, what's the best way to leverage an existing channel to jumpstart a new one? Uh, is it okay to cross promote or is it better not to cross streams? So what you really want to ask yourself on YouTube, right, is who is your target audience and what is your value proposition, right? And so if you've got, and it needs to be specific. So if on one YouTube channel, for example, Think Media here, the target audience is people who want to find the best tools, cameras, lighting, so it's a video tips channel. And if you're looking for smartphone accessories and all that kind of stuff, the best tools for creating video and social media content, but then also the best tips and strategies. And right now we're talking about strategy, right? And so it's not, you're not gonna learn about ketosis here. You're not gonna learn how to paint better. You're not gonna learn um, how to get not kill your succulents. I just had to re-up my succulents because I murdered the last ones, which is really hard to do. And so, uh, you know, it's a gift. And, and so when you've got one value proposition, but let's say I uh, am passionate about personal development, which I am. And let's say I wanted to do some kind of like mindset, health, productivity stuff, which does bleed into think media here, but sometimes that stuff doesn't do the best. Why? Because you got to stay on brand. You got to stay focused on your channel. So I do have another channel. It's called Sean Cannell. And someday my dream is to ramp that back up. I don't really post there, but I, that's where I'd probably talk about more like business, health, whatever. So here's what I would do. Here on Think Media, of course, I would leverage the people who are hanging out here for this content, but I would be extremely clear and I wouldn't try to waste your time. I would say, hey, just by the way, I know that we just talk about like tech and video and all that kind of stuff here, but if you were curious about like maximizing life, like how can you have more energy and vibrancy and productivity, then hey, you know, I'm, I'm really gonna be creating consistent content on my Sean Cannell channel. I'll link to it, go check it out. And that's the value proposition over there. And so if it's two different value propositions, I think cross promotion is fine. You just wanna do it empathetically to say, I understand you're here because of this. And I respect that. And I just want you to know this is happening over here. And you may only do that like one time this month. And then like three months later, you might be like, hey, if you're new here, by the way, did you know this was happening over here? Like every once in a while, educating what's happening somewhere else online. And you can apply that strategy to really any social media platform if there's different value propositions. But remember this, it is much better to be a meaningful specific rather than a wandering generality. And if you want to stand out online, you got to be specific. You got to niche down. You got to be known for one thing. You got to know what it is you're doing and what it is you're building. And more importantly, your branding, your messaging, how you package and present yourself online needs to make sense in such a way that actually it's not just you knowing what you're doing, that other people can know and understand what you're doing. Because look, if you confuse, you lose. If, if, if people land on your site, they land on your YouTube channel and they get confused, you lose, right? Like they just bounce. It's the world's too noisy. You need to make clear sense quickly online. Make sure that both channels are branded well and then um, you could cross promote. Hey, if you're getting value, can you like this and maybe share it? We're gonna take some uh, questions. Heather's grabbing some of your questions. Next question, how can you be consistent if you're a musician with little time on his or her hands? Well, 
Uh, I can't really speak to being a musician, but I know that all of us, and it's one of the C's, seven C's of YouTube success, man, we got to figure out consistency. And so how can you be consistent if you have little time on your hands? Whether you're a student, a parent, multiple jobs, I would say there's two sides of this. One, you need to get better and quicker at YouTube and like more strategic and more optimized, okay? But you also need to probably get better at life. <laughs> that sounds, you know, I don't mean that to sound pretentious. It's true though, right? Like, so you need to get, let's talk about first, better and quicker at YouTube, batch producing. Look, the only way I stay consistent here on Think Media is because we shoot insane amounts of videos all at once. Is I go to an event like Social Media Marketing World and I shot eight interviews, right? So on Video Influencers, that's eight weeks of content all shot in two days. And those two days are like coffee and I'm like, I'm a little, <laughs> you know, I'm, I, you're exhausted, but it gives you leverage for the next couple months. Because also, like, in if you're following Think Media, I really, and we really want to help you build your YouTube channel, but we're, really what we're about here is helping you actually build a real business is actually as a, become an entrepreneur or grow as an entrepreneur and, and run a business. And YouTube or social media influence is just a part of the bigger picture. So you gotta understand too, I'm like running a business, you know? So I have to, so even if you're like, well, Sean, you get to do this full time, yeah, but then you've got like taxes and uh, now a team and you've got like infrastructure and we've got back end and we have customers and like Facebook groups and membership programs. So we have to get better and quicker at YouTube. Can you learn how to edit faster? And but that happens by practice. Can you um, batch produce? Can you just speed up your skills? And I think you gotta give yourself grace, CJ, to just grow because even as a solopreneur, which I was for years building Think Media, right? Like 10. I was so fast at video editing because I've been doing it so long. Dude, I'm, I'll, I'll crush Premiere, man. I've been using Adobe Premiere since 2003, bro. This gray hair is real, man. I've been, I've been putting some time on some editing, you know? And so I've sped up. I created this entire slide deck today, not that it's like fancy, but I took the pictures of all these tweets and I arranged the things and I made the little thing about me being on Twitter like in the last 15 minutes as I planned this live stream. And I'm not, I'm not that's like not a boast. It is kind of flexing a little bit, to be honest. But it's because I've been putting in the reps. Like when you do something, it, anything that you're doing grows like a muscle in life. Like clearly I have been just doing hustling here on PowerPoint decks and creating video content because I'm not at the gym doing the reps because they haven't affected my arms like old scrawn dog here. But everything in life, I just thought about it like even Instagram stories, people are like, how do you just like flow off and first thing in the morning get up and go on Instagram stories? I'm like, well, a couple years ago I was intimidated before the whole era of stories, I couldn't do it. But I just did it every day and I did it multiple times a week. And now it's just kind of like effortlessly, I can just grab, you know, like it just kind of rolls off. We get, we're afraid to get on camera, but now we're not necessarily afraid. So you just boom, hey, midstream, you go on Instagram stories. Hey, we're actually live over on Think Media. Would love to hang out. Appreciate you. Um, I'm going to get back to this. And you post a story. Dude, I was, I'd be in fear and trepidation to do even that two years ago but I've been putting in the reps. So, so keep getting better and faster and be patient with yourself to just learn the skills. You'll design thumbnails faster. You will edit faster. You'll shoot faster. Your, your video number 50 is gonna be a lot more efficient than video number one or five. But then also, I think the life thing is almost probably more important. And CJ's question is how can you be consistent if, you're, if you have little time on your hands? Priorities. You gotta prioritize. And you gotta start D dabbling with your, you have to stop dabbling with your schedule and you have to really start dominating with your schedule. You have to get sniper, Navy SEALs on your schedule and say, okay, if I really care about this entrepreneurship thing and this YouTube thing, if I really care about this, I'm going to get focused and really build. So I'm going to prioritize my calendar. I'm going to kill some leisure time. I'm going to, if I, if I prioritize this, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to say no to certain things. Because every time you say yes to something, you're actually saying no to something else. And that might mean hard conversations with friends or family or decisions to not go out and, and chill with friends on Friday because you got a dream that you wanna build. It's choices, priorities, decisions, discipline, and it all grows like a muscle. Like, 
that might have seemed a little intense, but it grows like a muscle. Like you just do a few good decisions today. One of my favorite books sitting behind me exactly where my thumb is, is called The uh, Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. Highly recommend it. And it talks about the compound effect, that when you just do these small things, we like to say small tweaks lead to giant peaks. So small tweaks with your schedule, small tweaks in leveling up your skills are really gonna help you build momentum on your YouTube channel, CJ. Appreciate you. Uh, photo film, biggest piece of advice for young creators. Man, what a question. So I think my biggest piece of advice for young creators is gonna be, and I'm about to transition into these live questions. I see some super chats, thanks so much. Um, is that to dive in like all in. And actually my first piece of advice is actually to, to try and position yourself in school, in your free time, in opportunities that will grow the skills you want to grow for your future. So one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life and was to start interning at a church in 2003. So I went to intern at an, a youth group. There's like 19 kids in this youth group. And I just show up and I just kept showing up. And the youth pastor handed me a video camera and handed me some mini DV tapes. Happy Good Friday, by the way. And they, um, I started to edit. So I'm editing videos on Adobe Premiere back in 2003, once a week, every Wednesday night for youth group, 52 videos a year. After one year, the lead pastor of the church says, your videos aren't that bad anymore because your first videos are your worst videos. And he says, can you make some videos on the weekend? I'm a volunteer. And this is what I see in a lot of young people, and I don't want to make a blanket stereotype, but like a lot of young people don't have much grit, tenacity, or work ethic. CJ or Photo Finn, uh, Finn, I'm sure you do, but really grind. So I'm doing 104 videos, really plus, because I was doing a few extra ones. And by the way, I'm like, I'm doing wrong frame rates, and I'm selecting PAL instead of NTSC, because I don't even know what it is, and I'm having audio issues, and I'm trying to remove hiss, and I'm having lighting issues, and I'm having whole photo shoots go wrong, and I'm having shaky footage, and I'm like having, I'm forgetting to save, and things are crashing, and this is 2000 freaking four, bro. So like, like uh, the c computers are not even as fast as they are today and I'm capturing minute for minute over a firewire cable of the footage that I shot because there was no SD cards or there probably was but we didn't have any and and so uh, I'm like I'm ca if I shot two hours of footage it took two hours to ingest it onto the computer and so and, and holler if you can hear me too and smash the like button if you're from the throwback age if you got a little season in your salt uh, so you know I put in the time and man, that leveled me up. So I would say, put yourself in a situation, who can you intern for? I would identify, like try to go work for or intern for or get around um, a business, uh, you know, a creator. One of the best things you could ever do is move. When I moved to Las Vegas, I had no idea how much it would stretch me, grow me. Um, and because I moved to then uh, eventually a larger church with all the skills I learned self-taught and I got into a much higher pressure situation, you want to, as a young creator and any age, you want to put yourself in pressure situations because pressure makes diamonds. It levels you up. And I was in over my head. So I had to hustle and I had to study and learn. And when I first got there, they're like, have you ever been like the marketing director of a church of 3000 people? And I was like, um, I was the intern video guy of a church of 300 people do you think you could pull it off and and so any you know so then i was like ah, i think i can and then i was going home and buying like 14 books and and like you know watching videos there's not many videos this is like 2010 and i'm trying to i'm trying to level up but that pressure situation pushed me forward so like get into environments intern work for free work for cheap but work strategically, get around someone who's going to level you up. That's going to be the fastest way you can grow. And I mean, even more specifically than that, even as a communicator today, someone said just this week, they were talking about, I speak on stages and someone was like, where did, you know, like you seem comfortable speaking on stage. Is this like your second time? I'm like, second time, bro. I was in youth group in 2005, having to do announcements like awkward, like, yo, um, uh, we have, uh, the beach day. Uh, coming up, you know, it, but you just keep showing up. You keep punching fear in the face. You keep doing it. And so I've done it so much. And when I moved to Vegas, I was working at a church uh, for a pastor named Benny Perez. Speaks around the world, best-selling author. 
And every single Sunday, it was like getting to listen to one of the greats and learn from one of the greats. And then I had to eventually speak there in front of 700 people, terrified, for real, because I'd leveled up to, but then I never spoke to that many people. And so I'm just saying growth opportunities. I know I'm going long on this. Um, And then just keep studying, man. Just keep putting in the work. And if I could also say one other thing I'd say to young creators is live today like no one else so that later in your life you can live like no one else. And I'll be bold on this. I live this freaking principle, man. I lived in my 20s like not many other people I know. And now in my 30s, I'm living like not many other people I know. And I had peers and friends who prioritized, you know, and, and I'm not saying they're even wrong. I'm just saying based on your future ambitions, you should live today like no one else if you want to five, 10 years from now. What people don't understand is what 10 years of sacrifice will do to change the next 60 years of your life. Like of hardcore hustle, head down, five to 10 years of sacrifice leveling up will change the next 10 years of our life. I'm sure Heather's like, dude, you gotta speed up. And then one other thing I'd say to all creators, if you haven't watched this series on uh, how to start and grow a YouTube channel, then these six videos are just essential. They're foundational. I'll link to it in the description. I'll put it on the YouTube card. This will take you an hour to go through, get a journal, get something to write with. It go, we talk about starting the equipment. We talk about making YouTube your job, the principles for that. We have some video influencers videos from starting from zero, the mistakes new YouTubers make, how to boost your YouTube views. But the, I handpicked these videos and put them in a playlist because I know these will serve you. So watch this if you're early stage or if you haven't seen it yet and you're part of Think Media, this is some foundational content. So hey, we're talking about the seven C's. I got some questions for you. If you're getting value, can you smash the like button? Super chat, Captain Studios. Does Is it good to have uh, two niche hacking and fact video? Is it good to have two niches? It's almost never good to have two niches. And um, but to be honest, even here on Think Media, my choice to talk about both strategy and cameras is not the best strategy. It's, it would be better to have two channels. And it just it just would, right? So I'm looking at your channel right now. I think um, it's pretty clear to me, though, because I at least can see that you're kind of in the gaming uh, niche. Thanks for the super chat, too. Um, but I don't really know hacking, in fact, video, like what that means. Um, but remember this. You want to make a... Whatever someone subscribes for, Will they keep getting that? You know what I mean? And that's the problem. So imagine, you know, some people come to Think Media. They're like, well, I'm I'm assuming I'm just going to get the best camera advice. And then we're doing this live stream and they're like, what the heck is that about? Some people. Now, some people understand that there is both. And and that's our vision. It's like you you need both. This channel is, you know, entrepreneurship, business and the tools. And that was a pivot and it was a decision. But on YouTube, if you really want to light your fire on channel, your, your, your channel on fire, then when it's really specific so that every one of your videos becomes no miss. The reason they subscribed, when you show up again, they're like, ooh, that's just more of what I want, right? So you don't want variety channels, you want specificity. And there's a good channel I would recommend uh, called Little Monster Co. Matt Geelan is putting out some really good deep dive YouTube training stuff. And in it, he said that this is truer more now than ever, that you want single value proposition channels. Low gain, long. I'm graduating in May. Sweet. A degree to which I, f- I do not feel is right path for me. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. I plan on tackling online influence and growing my brand. I am excited to start the journey. Awesome. Uh, Logan, thanks for the super chat and um, congrats on graduating. And you know what? The cool thing is the degree that you got though is... Um, it all is all going to help for your future. I mean, maybe it's not completely aligned, but the experiences, I just have learned that uh, all the different seasons of my life have made me who I am today and helped me do what I can do today. Latif, just want to say thank you. Appreciate you. Thanks for the super chat. Unbox Warehouse, I have insecurities with my thumbnails. I keep changing my mind and I spend days editing thumbnails. Any tips on how I can stop obsessing? Well, welcome to my world. Um, I, I debate, I go back and forth, I feel like the stakes are so high, <laughs> you know, I'm like, if I do this wrong, what will happen? But uh, you gotta just eventually pick one, and that's, and you have to accept the fact that you're gonna win and you're gonna lose. It, you just are, like you're not gonna win them all. But guess, here's what I would actually probably encourage you to do. 
the way that you're going to win overall is to not focus on the short-term losses. So here's what I mean. You wanna focus on the big picture. And here's a fact about success. The master has failed more times than the amateur has even tried. All right? So you uh, want to keep smashing, you know, you want to, uh, you want to get your thumbnails out and you don't want to obsess, but here's, here's uh, a, a thought. If you were debating on releasing one video and you spent all your energy, and this is an exaggeration, for like two weeks trying to decide between two thumbnails, meanwhile, your competitor decides to put out 10 videos, who has a better chance of winning on the macro? The person who put out 10, the person who tried more, who put out more attempts. So I, every single YouTube video is like this. I feel like each one's like a little baby. Do you feel like that? I mean, you know what I mean? Like every day you're like, I'm, it's my little precious video. I get to, I'm getting it ready. I'm getting the thumbnails ready. And there's like that dopamine. There's nothing better than releasing a YouTube video. Am I right? Like if you've done this for a while, you're like, you get so pumped. It's like kind of like an addiction. And you're like, you're like, I want to release it. And I'm going to see how fast the velocity of it grows. And I want to like, is this one going to get more views than the last one? And you've got all these things and you can get so emotionally wrapped up in the one video. What I want you to be more wrapped up in is the next 100 and, and being more wrapped up on the next thing. Another thing that I see a lot, especially as we do uh, like private live streams in our um, inner circle community and like Video Ranking Academy private Facebook groups, a lot of times we just talk about this idea that you just need to have more attempts. You need to have more uploads. You need to just get more um, at-bats out there. And what we talk about in Video Ranking Academy is... YouTube's kind of like um, baseball and ranking videos is kind of like baseball. And my goal with any video is to only get a base hit, meaning rather than have it be super sexy because we all want a grand slam and a home run. But if I just do an ugly bunt and I just kind of run and get on first base and people are like, dude, that was cheap, man. And it was just, you know, real, real gnarly. And if that's all I ever did and it was just this like first base, well, eventually the bases are loaded and then eventually it's run after run after run. And then eventually... You get that breakout video, that could have been better. Breakout video, right? And then that video might bring awareness to all your other stuff. So I guess what I want to encourage you to do is always be, and, and then the, one of the biggest things, this I remember now, that in, in a group we talked about recently was stop, like there's some value to going back and optimizing old content. And here's the bigger principle. Like there's some value to looking backwards and learning or there's some back, some value to looking back, uh, backwards and tweaking things, but that's kind of like a rear view mirror. Dude, a rear view mirror is, t is just that tiny thing in your car, but life is the freaking windshield. And the amount of effort, I believe, you should be focusing on the past and even your last video and even your last at bat is the rear view mirror is like 2%. But what you should be focusing on is the windshield and what's your future was forward. What's the next you know, topic I can cover? What's the next trend I can cover? What's the next video, you know, video I could search term and research and, and try? What's the next video I could shoot? What's the next thing I could do? Your future is forward. And so meanwhile, that disposition, I hope this kind of gets you to, to lean in and say, okay, I got to eventually just say done is better than perfect. I got to eventually just let this video get published. And, and more than that, I got to get it out and, and then stop being too romantic about this one and just being like, dude, it's about the next one. And that kind of forward lean is where you'll break through. And that's also where you'll get the, mess, the most feedback because the reason the master is the master is he's got way more data. He's learned what doesn't work. Thomas Edison, I learned 10,000, it took me 10,000 things, uh, tries of learning how it didn't work to find the one time that it did. It was all those failures that aren't even failures because he was the inventor that was super successful, right? Invented the light bulb. Um, although debated and there's controversy around it, but you know, whatever, like all this forward hustle and all this stuff. So focus on the future. Cooking with Kirby. Uh, Sean, I love your feedback. It has helped me grow very well over the past several months. Why is a cooking such a slow growing niche? Well, a couple things that I would encourage you when it comes to cooking is what are you cooking? Um, and it's better to be a, a meaningful specific rather than a wandering generality, okay, right? So what are you cooking? 
cooking is is a niche because already you're you know if I'm talking about cameras you're talking about cooking so we're already separate but in cooking it's just like so much under that like is there a specific type of cuisine is there is it a specific type of tutorial is it a specific type of whatever it is that you're doing I am actually I mean is Kirby the theme of it like cook to what is it what kind of style of food and then if I have to look and and so it's clear ish but but uh, I think that there could be some value in getting tweaking your branding so that people really know what the promise is and what they're getting. Second thing I would say is I, I think you should celebrate the success you are having. I you know it's never fast enough for us, and I get it. Same for me. But bro, two days ago, five hundred thirty-five people. Like, how many people watched your neighbor's video yesterday or in the last two days? That's right. Your neighbor's is drinking Budweiser, floating down a river somewhere you know, playing beach volleyball, which is fine, but you're out here hustling, making videos, building your future, right? So be thankful. I mean, I'm not saying you are, but like you got 688 views on this this guy right here. And one of my favorite little snapshots that vidIQ gives us, you sometimes have to refresh, is the stats over here. So here's one of your goals is to actually get some stats. And your stats, you grew by 801 subscribers in the last month. I'm a, I'm feeling a little saucy today, Kirby, and and I love you. But dude, 801 subscribers, you're calling that slow? The heck, man! It's freaking awesome. Like that's legit. Like obviously it could be faster. You know, obviously it could be more. But I think it's it's really analyzing and appreciating, and, and I'm sure you do. I mean, you got 70,000 views this last month. So here's a couple things you could do. I mean, if you double your videos, you double your views. It's not necessarily that linear, but if you could get to 22 videos or if you can make your videos stronger, that's a thought. My next thought is really to really blow up, you need a breakout video um, because one recipe could bring awareness to all of your other recipes. One of our uh, Video Ranking Academy members, Nicole, has this Kids OT help channel. So she um, is hasn't even been on YouTube that long and did a video about tummy time. So it's like tummy time, um, you know, I don't know. Let's see, some sort of tummy time video. And here it is, eight months. This is what happened. As, as a new creator, this video just takes off. And let's check out what's happening over here on vidIQ. I mean, here's the ranking. I mean, we're just killing the game. Way to go, Nicole. And so this video, I mean, half a million views. But really, this one breakout video lit fire and now 28,000 subscribers and now much more momentum on our new views, but then overall um, traffic across the board. So a lot of what I want to encourage you with is just keep doing what you're doing. You know, small tweaks lead to giant peaks. Keep improving your stuff. Um, we have, I mean, we have a plethora of strategies and um, in our, I don't know if you've watched our, our web classes or anything like that, but I think finding a, a trending topic and keyword research and getting that right video at that right time. We're coming into spring and summer, depending on where you're in the world, like what recipes should you be covering? Google trends, what's trending? Um, and, uh, you know, blow it up. Bahini, any advice for getting my channel to the 10,000 mark? So great question. Um, thanks for the super chat. You're well on your way. Um, I'm going to say it to you too, probably, that part of it's patience because you will get, you're going to get there almost no matter what, you know, you're going to get to, here's your, here, I mean, here's my advice. It's not even advice. I mean, I'll, I'll give you some tips too, but you know, like it's going to take you less than two months to just get there at your current rate. So if you just keep doing what you're doing times two, that's going to be 1300 and that'll put basically put you there. So let's get you there in exactly two months, which would be a little bit faster growth than now. 12 videos. You can always double your videos. You're like, well, it's freaking hard to get the 12 videos out. Like, what do you mean double your video? Like, I'm saying if you double your videos, you'll get there faster and keep them good. Uh, if you look for those, you know, take, take the ones that are working and, and uh, do a couple more. Study your most popular, of course, and try to maybe redo those. Um, it seems like... Yeah, I mean, I don't know much about this space uh, specifically, but I think the right video at the right time. And then this is a belief of mine and a couple of the other channels I've looked at, including the Cooking with Kirby one, is, uh, is 
I always want to invest in my brand. I always don't want my brand, my dissatisfaction with my current brand. And what I mean is like my website, my photography, my color, my color palette, my logo, my cover image. But any smart content creator should always be thinking about elevating their brand, leveling up your brand, right? And so your thumbnails could be better. Um, they could be clearer. They could, you know, so that's photography a little bit. Um, they could be easier to read. I'm not, I'm personally not the biggest font, a, a fan of the Disney font. Um, so that, you know, that's a tweak. Uh, like there's not really a value proposition to the channel. So maybe people just kind of understand it's about uh, Hemi engines or, you know, but, but I, th so, so if you level up your brand, um, as you keep putting out quality content, I think, I mean, you're going to get to 10,000 regardless because you're already crushing. And like I said, in two months, but, uh, those are a few tips. Chris Titus tech. Thank you so much for your video since starting six months ago. Um, all the super chats are getting prioritized, friends. That's what's happening. Heather is feeding these over to me. We got, you know, Chris Titus Tech in the place asking, Start, since starting six months ago, I've grown to over 20,000. Great. I'm getting overwhelmed with my full-time job in YouTube. When do I need to start thinking about transitioning into um, my part-time as my main gig? Ooh, I like this. The 25% rule, Chris. And uh, I'm going to give you the 25% rule with the disclaimer that if you go bankrupt, please don't email me. Just kidding. <laughs> kind of. But here's the real 25% uh, rule as I, as I joke is when you, can, when you hit 25% of the needed income to live on. Got it? So first thing I want you to define, and everyone should do this, actually. You're listening to this. You're on the replay. You're here live. You smash like because you're, you're grateful because it's a good Friday. Um, write down how much money do you need to live on a month? I asked some content creators the other day, had a similar question, video marketing world last year, a couple came up to me, man, I hate my job. I want to do this full time. The wife was talking about her husband and he's there. And I said, well, first question is how much do you need to live? Like really like minimal, like if you were to bootstrap, get to work on your passion, your side hustle full time. So to reduce your lifestyle and get down to your minimum, but like realistically, like you still have to eat and like whatever. What's that number? Is that number $3,500? Do you have, you know, 10 kids in the heart of Manhattan? So that number is $30,000, you know, a month to just, just to pay your rent. Like depending on where your cost of living is, you need a sniper on that target. When you've got that defined, uh, Chris, what I want you to do next is then to say, what's 25%. And when I was October, 2015, I was fortunate enough to get fired by three freelance clients back to back three weeks in a row. And I say fortunate enough because at the time, I did not think I was, it was fortunate. I was freaking out. Uh, first week, you know, I, I was making five grand a month from freelance clients, $60,000 a year, living in Las Vegas, supporting my wife, everything that we have going on from lifestyle to medical challenges and bills to uh, insurance to uh, just the full thing as completely independent. We didn't have a boss, our own health insurance. Everything is on us as freelancers at the time. And I lost all three of my uh, clients the first week. Bring Sean, we got to let you go. All right. Hey, it's only one. No big deal. You know, we like hired a full-time person. We don't need you. Second week, Sean, we got to let you go. Okay. Yeah. That's two out of three. That's not good. Third week. Bring. Guess what, Sean? I'm like, I already know. I mean, based on how my month's going, appreciate it. I'll just, I'll just say it for you. Let me fire myself. And uh, after a week of depression, Ben and Jerry's and Netflix, I um, talked to a mentor of mine, David Goldstein. He said, look, man, you got to go all in. You should have gone all, all in a long time ago. But the key was this. So if I needed to make five grand a month, then what's the 25% of that? And don't ask me because I don't know. 1,500 bucks. So if you're making 25% of your target as a side hustle, Chris, money, then you you should consider just quitting your job. Transition, I mean, transition out. Let them know, hey, I'm gonna, whatever, two weeks, maybe it's a month. Transition out because this is what happens. We, it's a scary, we're afraid. But when you then think, okay, what happens when you don't have to do 20 hours or 25 or 30 hours of extra work, in, including your daytime job, but you can go all in uh, and do 
60 hour weeks on your YouTube channel and your brand and your ways to make money and your website, dude, the game changes. It just does. And what happens, the reason you need to hit that 25% target is because that's proof you're the real deal. It's proof that it's not just a pipe dream. I think people make a mistake. They haven't, they're not even getting momentum yet. And they're not getting, here's what I want to show you. Chris, I mean, you're growing by 7,000 subscribers a month, 24 videos. I mean, you, you quit your job. You could double your videos. And that's what I did. I just didn't quit mine. I, got, I just had no clients. So when I went all in uh, and my mentor, one of my business mentors, David's like, yo, this is God kicking you off the cliff, man. It's time to sink or swim, man. It's time to fly or not. I was like, all right, it's November. You know, Think Media, we do tech. We cover Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Dude, fourth quarter. And you're doing tech too is the bomb.com, right? Because the online shopping, so much money is being spent. Even if you have any affiliate marketing happening, it usually goes up three to four X if you don't do anything. And if you then maximize that time of the year. So I just started creating videos all day, every day by myself. This is October, 2015. Now it's November 1st, 2015. And I would wake up, edit, shoot, research, edit, post, research, thumbnail, post, post, edit, shoot, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, camera, lighting, camera, camera, tip, video, just nonstop, 68 to 80 hour weeks. But what else did I have to do? It was just a short sacrifice season. And by January 1st, 2016, we had, over those last couple months, had made about $2,500, well, the first month, and then the second one had bumped up to about $4,500 off just Amazon affiliates, not YouTube ads. So now, going into the year, I had replaced the majority of that freelance income but I'm sitting there living my dream, man. It was Christmas. Like no boss, no longer had to work with anybody. Now I just had to figure things out for myself and build what I wanted to build. So I hope that encourages you. You got to work it out. You got to know who your dependents are and what's happening. Um, but when I look at the momentum of your channel, I feel like you may be kind of like me and and you it's easy to just continue to put it so far off in the future when I feel like you're closer than you know if you're not uh, there right now. So Dr. Applesauce, thanks for motivating me to get started six months ago. 2,200 subs, congrats. Now in a niche I love, constantly looking for ways to make videos others aren't making. Love it, 2,200 subs in six months is great. All right, YouTube questions. The leveling Lucian. If a certain niche seems saturated, is there still room for an amateur? Um, that's a great question. You know, it depends on how uh, the style of the niche. I mean, you don't want to put yourself down too much, but self-awareness is very important. And so, I mean, I don't even know if you, here's, here's one of the, I'm going to be kind of hardcore with you. I need you just posting videos. I mean, based on your channel, you've got, you, you posted a year ago. And you're doing gameplays, and and you could do those records, and these just look like they're probably raw gameplays uploaded. But I'm saying in a year, you got seven videos. You got to put a video out a week, and you got to commit to doing it for a year just to practice. So I don't even want you to worry about your niche, actually. I don't want you to worry about saturation or even room. I want you to worry about personal development, leveling up, practicing uh, getting your voice. I want you to worry about making the best videos you can possibly make for yourself so that you can say i did that i edited that i took that tom clancy division two two hour video but i made it five minutes of music and effects and it's like a fire energetic gameplay and it still may, might get no views but it's not for anybody else it's for you because you got to practice level up your craft and use your season and obscurity to prepare you for popularity so I hope that helps. Appreciate you. Thanks for being here. Collectible reviews. Um, if I have really low subs, should I just focus on uploading content and not worry about uploading the newest thing in my niche as soon as they drop because it's going to get traction? I mean, I think based on your niche of collectible reviews, I think that I would give you that same advice that I just kind of gave over there along the lines of um, I still would go after the trends. I would still, every single time I'd sit down, my next video I upload should be if I'm gonna create it from scratch, the best possible video I could make. And if you have the most opportunity, and by the way, I'm looking at your channel and, and you're doing great for only having seven videos out. I mean, 220 views, like, I, I, I wanna kinda of be hardcore on everybody here because we're all in the same thing. Patience, patience. Not like patience, like checked into a hospital. Be patient 
and put in the work because you only got seven total videos. Did, did you hear my story earlier? I did 52 videos a year in 2003, two years before YouTube started. Like, build the muscles, build the muscles. And so, we're so what I mean is we're so obsessed, like we need to see all this growth when we need to focus more on the process. This is a theme of today. Might I encourage you to uh, join me over on Instagram if you're looking for a place to hang out for continuous uh, you know, motivation, latest tech tips, kind of similar themes to over here, and then just some of the behind the scenes. But today's theme is actually all about just start posting and get your first video, first 30 videos posted just so you can learn and, and level up and grow and don't worry about anybody else. And that's, that's kind of what I would encourage you and just make the best video possible that you can. All right, if you have really low subs, should I just focus on uploading content and not worry about uploading the newest thing in my niche as soon as they drop? Because it's gonna get, oh yeah. Booksy fam, how long should it take to hit 100,000? Mm. Well, we could do your math, we could do the math. Um, and actually what, what's, what is funny, it's not that funny, but again, you can just go to these stats. How long will it take to hit 100,000? Easy, 100,000. Okay, we don't even need that, but, but uh, divided by 1821, it's going to take 54 months, but you will get to 100,000. You only uploaded two videos in the last 30 days. So I think if you upload four, you'll get there sooner. I think if you upload eight, you'll get there sooner, assuming you still have the same quality. And what's cool is you are getting views and subscribers. And so this brings us back to the old tip of... Patience, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> like smash like for patience because, because I mean, and I know we want to go faster and, and trust me, like, let's talk about it. But, but you see what I'm saying? Like I was even like, how long till I hit a million? Well, just do the math of how fast we're growing and how many months. And right now on Think Media, it'll probably be like two years unless we have a viral video. And guess what I'm committed to? This is, I'm glad this came up. I'm committed to it either way. I'm committed to just showing up, smashing it out, banging videos, hit and record, shooting videos. And, and if it takes a couple, three years, great. And guess what? I'm trying to go viral today and tomorrow. You know, like I, I hope, I'm waiting for the, my moment. I'm waiting for the Grand Slam as well, but I'm not waiting, I'm taking action. And here's what I think is gonna happen is we're gonna hit it sooner than then, that because the right thing will hit, the right video will pop. So I, I wanna encourage you, same, same thing. You've got this growth, keep, keep growing. And then just keep studying, keep learning. Go deep into some of our strategy videos um, here on the channel, and um, those are serve you. So, hey, I'm gonna take a couple more questions here, but if you're getting value, smash the like and share button. I've got a cool announcement too, by the way. Um, you could get the YouTube Secrets audiobook for free. Did you know that? TubeSecretsAudio.com. It just uh, came out. We're gonna be promoting it big here in a couple weeks. Um, but right now, I just wanted to put this on your radar. If you don't have an Audible account yet, that'll take you to a page where if you sign up for a free Audible account trial for th uh, for a couple days, um, it'll for 30 days, 30 day trial, you will get you could get a book free, and you could get YouTube Secrets audiobook free, co-read by Benji Travis and myself. Um, if you haven't read YouTube Secrets, um, we're going to be giving away two copies of the book on this stream as well. All you have to do is answer the question that I'll bring up again in a second, but I'll take a few more questions here. Mid Valley, I'm in a somewhat popular seasonal channel. What can I do to get more views in the off season? Hmm. Great. Well, let's check it out. Okay. Mind Valley mercenaries. Um, okay. So my thought is just my initial thought is like, yes, of course there's going to be seasons, but I still feel like you're, I mean, what is your channel really about? So I see the fishing, hunting. I kind of get that. So okay, so hunt fish. Yep, that made sense. Outdoors. So look, people are interested in this year long. Year long. So I think actually the mindset, it's people want this kind of content. Like you're you're obsessed with this industry. You know, this is a passion for you, right? And so what do you think about in the off season, right? You're getting ready. You're 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 like. You're gearing up. Maybe you're buying stuff because it's discounted in the off season. Um, you're doing the alternative thing. And by the way, globally, I would think, um, since I really think hunting and fishing and outdoors, of course, is a global thing. I ignorantly say, you know, is you would know more, of course. But um, I would just literally, you know, it's almost like 
in in the on season broadcast the football games in the off season broadcast the behind the scenes and the workouts and you know what i mean like the the full picture so i'd keep serving and speaking towards that um love your channel looks like things are going really good i would say um i i think it's going great and i the theme of today is just celebrating growth and looking at like hey if i can go 18 videos this might be a number of might be 500 and, uh, you know, that might be 50, 60, 70,000 a month as you just keep leveling up. Small tweaks lead to giant peaks. But love what you're doing. Thanks for the super chat. Thanks for being here. Um, just started out with football vlog content in March. Would love to receive some help and constructive criticism. Um, we're uh, in the final countdown here. So thank you so much for the super chat. I'm going to hit a couple more questions. Uh, leading worship well thoughts on building a channel using primarily live streaming i want to go live once a week and teach on specific content do i need other content or is that enough you know on the macro um you got to test and experiment with everything personally i don't think it is enough i also uh want to call you out of of whatever you're doing and um and really really uh post more videos man one video go three months, like you're in the strat you're in the pondering phase when you need to be in the posting phase. Because the way you're gonna get feedback is by going live, seeing if it works, is then by listening and seeing what people say, is then by trying and, and and I want to say this, I personally don't think it 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 has worked. Like it's worked for other people. It doesn't work for some. It works in some niche. I don't know how good you'll be on it. That like you gotta just get out of debating and start posting the videos. And here's why, because the only way you can get feedback, the only way you could study your YouTube analytics, the only way you can actually see what's working, what's not working, is to put something out there to experiment actually on. So my generalized personal thing uh, thought is that here on Think Media, our goal is to have short, strong, edited YouTube videos, and it's to also have not too often, but like hour long Q and A's like this. And then a lot of Q and A trainings with slide decks that are about 25 minutes or so. And so, um, and, uh, you know what I'm saying? So mix it up, test it up. Don't ever get very romantic about one content format. Be willing to read the data. The, the best entrepreneurs, leaders, content creators, don't get overly romantic or emotional about their content, which is hard to do because this is the stuff we've created and we've shaped and it's our voice and we're putting ourselves out there and we're vulnerable and it's tough. But what we also have to do is be able to separate ourselves from that a little bit and just say, okay, let's, we, let's just try a bunch of stuff, fail a bunch of times, experiment a bunch of times. My friend Casey Graham sold his company. He's like, I tried 13 experiments and he spent a lot of money. 12 failed and I found the thing that I'm doing now. You know what I mean? Like, so where's your, you got one video up. I mean, just to be a little bit of a coach, because look, a cheerleader is going to cheer you on no matter what. And you will get that from me here on Think Media. But like, I want you to get results. And a coach is going to tell you the hard thing. I need some videos, man. I need you posting, testing. I need you to commit to at least going live once a week, posting once a week. And I don't need that to start like next, you know, three weeks from now. I need it to start immediately because today is your day of taking action. Because if you delay, then you lose another day. Regret is like our biggest enemy, man. We're only, time is ticking. You know what I mean? Life's not getting any longer, right? And so take action, hustle. A couple super chats just to thank you for the super chats. Fishing Frenzy, Sophisticated Neanderthal, Experimental Aircraft, Mile High Campers. Thank you so much for the super chats. Hey, a, a thing that I want to encourage everybody with today is this. Overnight success never happens overnight. Overnight success never happens overnight, all right? So uh, I encourage you, keep doing the work. Keep hustling. Keep posting videos. Keep studying. Keep learning. Keep leveling up. And remember your reasons. Like, really stay focused on why you're doing this, what you're fighting for, who you're fighting for. Um, sometimes what we need is sometimes pain and, um, really the only time we ever change is when we get sick enough with our current circumstances that we can tap into the resolve and the grit and the fire that we need to press on. Because if we just sit 
on the sidelines watching every other person do their YouTube channel, following every other guru, watching every video, even my own videos, man. Maybe there's a time to just be like, look, I actually need to take my eyes off of just what everyone else is doing, getting FOMO, comparison, tripping myself out, losing my joy, giving myself self-doubt because I'm just looking at what everybody's doing and everyone's uploading video. No, get blinders on for your thing and then build and build and build and use your season in, in obscurity to prepare you for popularity and build and build and keep posting and don't worry about what the competition is doing of course appreciate celebrate but sometimes there's a season to just get off social media a little bit because you need to focus on your thing your dream is too important to only be looking at everybody else building their dream you've got your own niche channel, vision, family to care for. You've got your own destiny. God wove greatness into your DNA and you need to express that. And right now it can be really easy to just get so paralyzed by what everybody else is doing and compare ourselves to everybody else when really we need to be crushing it, punching fear in the face and tapping into courage, finding our own consistency and prioritizing our own YouTube channel brand and videos. And not even worrying if they're like, even worrying less about what's happening with them and just being, I'm on my grind. I'm in my lane. The person I'm competing with is me yesterday. That's, the, that's who you're competing with. The person I'm comparing myself with is me yesterday. And you wanna really celebrate? Then compare yourself with you yesterday. Because like when I just think about it, you, when you could go, man, when I look back at my first videos, man, those are my worst videos. And, and I, when, I, don't, I may not be as far as I wanna be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be right and i'm growing and so think about like compare yourself where you were yesterday and so you know you've probably maybe seen this before but this is a uh, you know my first video and i'm sitting here talking about how i'm not going to be energetic or entertaining and i'll throw a link to that in the description if you want to check it out but it's like you know just if i just look back and i say man i'm further than i was then and if i focus on getting one percent better every day then you're going to be so far in the next six months and 12 months Staying in your own lane, focusing on your own grind, and building your hustle. Hey, uh, if you want to win a free copy of YouTube Secrets, comment what is your YouTube channel about and what is one of your goals. By the way, the best way to do that is to come back as this live stream kind of opens up the real comments and leave a comment because that's how I'm going to be able to respond to your comment, pick two winners to give away two books, take advantage of that. Question of the day, what topic or question should I cover in a future video? If you want to get a video covered on Think Media, we didn't get to it, leave that in the comments and we'll look at this video for a future Q&A. Definitely enter to win a copy of YouTube Secrets um, and uh, super grateful for you. Thanks for being here. Um, smash like if you got value and i'll look forward to doing future q a's like this i know there's lots of questions um and mattis thank you so much for the super chat uh gal comp gamer thank you for the super chat and um really really appreciate you guys hey subscribe if you're not subscribed if you want to check out a deep dive in the seven c's of youtube success click or tap the screen right there if you want to watch another video from think media click or tap the screen right there until next time this channel is all about the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video keep crushing it and we will Talk soon.